Hello, and thank you for joining me today. It's an honor and a privilege to join you today to talk about this past year. I think we can all agree that it's been a challenging and certainly a breathtaking time. First, I'd like to share some of my personal history and motivations for seeking this assignment. I've always believed personally in serving your community in any way that you can. I've served my country as a United States Marine and for years now, I've served my local community in various capacities, including coaching young folks. I've served my family, my wife, children, and grandchildren by consistently setting examples of what community pride and engagement looks like. But for years, I felt there were holes or gaps in that service. Like many people, and maybe you too, I've always felt like I could and probably should do more. I just didn't know how or even how to get started. One day in 1997, I went to Indianapolis on a school trip with one of my sons. The event was a conference for the status of black males. There, I heard a fiery speech from a dynamic young speaker. That speaker was fairly well known and embraced by the political establishment, and today he continues a life of public service. As for me, outside of my family, friends, and neighbors, and perhaps the people that I interacted with, no one really knew a whole lot about me. However, that speech moved me. I knew then and there that I could and would do more to make Gary, Indiana, my hometown, a better place. I had my why moment. I needed to make a greater impact on my neighborhood and I knew that my community needed more from me and people like me. I looked around and assessed the situation. My neighborhood streets and streets throughout the city needed to be repaired. And overall, we just weren't satisfied with the services that were being rendered. Furthermore, I didn't see persons in my generation stepping up to do many positive things for the city and to make it a better place. That's when I took a third step. I did something about it. I threw my hat in the ring to be the next precinct committee person and to my surprise and maybe the surprise of many people and Perhaps to the dismay of some, I won. I followed the same model when I successfully ran for Gary Common Council, the Lake County Council, Lake County Assessor's Office, and ultimately when I ran to become your mayor. I was very careful to determine why I wanted to act. Also, what needed to be done, and equally important, how would I do it? As your mayor, I work with a dedicated team of professional people who want to make Gary better and who are looking for ways to improve the city and make things happen on a daily basis. I'll tell you a little bit more about their work shortly. But we can't do it alone. Our city needs your help and we also need your service. If you're looking for ways to help or ways to do your part to reimagine Gary or to regenerate our city, I recommend that you ask three questions. Why do I want to serve? What should I do? And how do I do it? I have a long list of examples of how this model has worked for us and continues to work. In late February, my team and I began planning our process and our response for the historic coronavirus. Many of you know it as COVID-19. We knew that we wanted to do everything that we could to protect our families, friends, and neighbors. Even before Governor Eric Holcomb ordered Hoosiers to stay at home and before the President of the United States declared a national emergency back in mid-March, we had already assessed our situation and created two protocols that we would use once COVID came to Lake County. When the virus officially arrived, which was somewhere in March, we were in position to act. We launched both protocols within a few days of each other. Soon thereafter, we took further steps to protect our community, like closing city facilities and giving away free masks and food packages. Also, we shared critical, up-to-date information with our residents. 
In addition to that, we worked with partners across Northwest Indiana, such as the Northwest Indiana Information Sharing and Security Alliance. And we even launched an innovative COVID-19 dashboard on our city's brand new website, gary.gov. We worked with hospitals and clinics in the state of Indiana in an effort to provide testing and medical services to all of our residents. And we began to prepare for a field hospital to be located in Gary in case it became necessary. For me, the best part was watching as strangers who were determined to help their neighbors also realize that many people needed help with food and mask or maybe just an encouraging word, and they acted. This fight, of course, has taken many twists and turns, and as we stand here today, we've seen 3,400 residents infected with the virus, and unfortunately, we've lost over 100 family members and neighbors and friends to this disease. And certainly on behalf of my family, the entire city, and all of us, our prayers go out to the loved ones who suffered such painful losses. In our responses to the COVID-19 pandemic, it's clear to me that we've been following a model that works. We've asked what needed to be done to act and we've assessed the situation and then we acted. My team and I did it again when we took a hard look at our city's finances. We needed to shore up our finances if our city was going to ever move forward. We learned that the city of Gary did not have $15 million in reserves, as we were told in 2019. So our team crunched numbers and studied countless pages and files and concluded that there were no reserves. Attorney Arlene Colvin, who serves as my chief of staff and interim controller, got to work with our finance team and our consultant, Cinder and Cinder, to identify bills that had not been paid and to correct bank records that had not been reconciled. They used the proceeds from a bond issue to fill the holes in our 2020 city budget and to ensure that we would start our 2021 with a balanced budget. We suspended the one-stop shop that was introduced last year also when we learned that it was not completed and left many gaps in operations as well as several inefficiencies. In addition to those efforts, we've introduced technology in our collection processes that will improve our revenue reporting by reducing the possibilities of theft, and we've reduced our operational costs of our vehicle fleet by roughly 30%. We've been taking a comprehensive look at our city's internal processes and using technology and different mindset we believe that we have a workforce that is now 45% more productive. Our residents deserve a healthy home for their city government. It was not hard to determine City Hall as a combination of leaks and moldy areas with fallen ceilings and numerous problems with heating, cooling, and ventilation. So we made plans for a city center campus, which includes a new facility for all city departments, including public safety. We will finalize these plans for this campus and find funding sources and we'll get to work. My team and I also found more creative ways to offer more economic opportunities to our residents and businesses. We knew that it made no sense to reimagine Gary without a real vision of what we can become. Now, we're moving out of the shadows of massive integrated steel mills and away from relying solely on traditional manufacturing. If we do not offer more for our residents, especially to excite our young people, then we will fail them. They will move away and this will continue to negatively affect our tax base. In usual fashion, we've begun acting on this also. We are reimagining Gary as a technology hub and as a home for small businesses. In October, Senior Advisor and Director of Community Investment, Eric Reeves, helped us welcome Acumen Technologies, which is a cutting edge, high tech company that will build the first ever 5G phones and tablets built entirely in the United States. We're also partnering with Indiana University to increase access to faster internet broadband for Gary residents 
as well as seeking state and federal grants to help build a smart city infrastructure for e-learning, telehealth, and work skills development. You couple all that with free public Wi-Fi in our city and you begin to see the city as a digital hub. Early in my administration, we also offered small businesses, especially our women and minority owned and veteran enterprises, a significant boost when I signed the administration's first executive order setting higher goals for awarding more city purchasing and servicing contracts to those businesses. In March, we announced a unique partnership with Spectacle Entertainment, who's the entity behind the New Hard Rock Casino of Northern Indiana, as well as included the Northwest Indiana Building Trades Council, the Construction Advancement Foundation, and the Indiana Plan in an effort to provide more opportunities for local residents to participate in the construction of this new facility. The new Hard Rock Casino has boosted many businesses in our city and created new opportunities for our residents, even before it became a true economic driver for us. These are concrete, real actions that will change the lives and motivate us to do more. Under a new planning director, we're looking at transit-oriented developments, or TODs, that will house mixed-use developments that will couple beautiful residential spaces with commercial and retail spaces at strategic points in our city. While we're changing the ways that we think about economic development opportunities in Gary, we must also move forward using cleaner, renewable energies. We've started working to reduce our energy cost and our carbon footprint by generating renewable energy sources and renovating our city-owned properties to use those sources. This can be a very expensive proposition, but by seeking support from programs like the State of Indiana's Guaranteed Energy Savings Program, we can tackle those high costs and begin seeing savings on our energy use that will pay for many more improvements. With these developments, we are heading directly into the future, but we're keeping our eyes on our situation right now as well. We all want a cleaner city, we all want to take pride in our neighborhoods again. Property owners, including the City of Gary and Gary Community School Corporation, must keep their properties up. Our code enforcement team is doubling down on their campaign to reduce blight and to get property owners to clear out cluttered, dangerous properties throughout the city, district by district. We've empowered this team to use the unsafe building law and to order demolition of all unsafe structures citywide. We've served dozens of property owners with notices requiring them to either demolish or remediate unsafe properties or face stiff fines or legal judgments and tax liens. We've also begun to investigate new technologies that will make it easier for our code enforcement team to target and track work of uninhabitable properties and see what owners are doing about those properties. We're gonna make Gary safer. We insist on making Gary a place where individuals and families can feel free to visit with their neighbors or play in our parks or just enjoy themselves. You can help us. Every day we have 164 men and women who dress in the Gary Police Department uniform attach their badges, and come to work to serve and protect. These folks are committed to us, but they certainly cannot do it alone. We're on a path to having fewer homicides than we did in 2019, but we likely will have almost 50% more non-fatal violent acts. This is unacceptable by any measure. If you want to make Gary safe, you can act. Keep your eyes open. If you see something, say something. We have a toll-free tip line at 866-274-6347. If you know of neighbors engaging in illegal activity or you fear something is about to happen, just say something. It is anonymous and if you use that tip line, you're doing your part to serve your community. You can decide right now to make Gary a safe place. Then you can look around your neighborhood and when you see something, you can call and report it. It's simple, but believe you me, it will make a difference. 
Earlier this year, our nation saw tens of thousands of residents take to our streets to protest police brutality and racial injustice by police departments. It was sparked by the torture and murder of George Floyd in Minnesota and by the unfortunate murder of Breonna Taylor in Louisville. These are not new issues to us. People of color and people of lower economic status have known these injustices since our nation was founded. But technology has changed our world and cameras and cell phones are capturing these incidences everywhere. Here in Gary, we have had too many instances where good officers have made bad mistakes and we've had too many times where bad officers have continued to harm our community. Along with making our streets safer, I am committed to taking bold steps for our police department and our residents. In June, with the support of the Gary Police Chief Brian Evans and the Gary FOP President Gregory Wolf, I became the first mayor in the state of Indiana to call for a police reform commission to examine our city's police department and policing policies. The commission members come from a cross section of our society and they will make recommendations to our administration on how to improve our policing policies and my team and I will carefully examine every point they make. Our Gary Fire Department is also overworked and understaffed, but they find ways to help us each and every day. We'll continue to work with our Fire Chief, Sean O'Donnell, and his team to find more ways to fund firefighter positions and technology that will ease the burden as they head out of the firehouses every single day to save lives and protect property. When my team and I asked why we should take these steps, it led us to assessing Gary and taking action. I'm proud of the work that we've done so far, but we still have a very long way to go. We have others who are making a difference as we continue to reimagine our city also. We have active block clubs working to make their neighborhoods safer. In addition to community groups who are teaching our young people how to reimagine Gary, as well as helping others who may be down on their luck. These folks are serving in ways now that will pay off well into the future. And we need that type of vision, the type that will give our young persons a reason to call Gary their homes well into the rest of their lives. Gary, Indiana is a mature city with deep roots, a rich history, and resilient people. When Mayor Jerome A. Prince decided to run for mayor, his call to action was to reimagine Gary, to begin a renaissance, a regeneration, revitalization, and resetting of the city's housing, infrastructure, economics, and to set it on a plan for growth and success. Despite the previous administration's affirmations of budgetary revenue left, the new administration was met with considerably less operating income and a city on the brink of collapse. Areas of the city were strewn with garbage and citywide dumping. City Hall itself and the proposed one-stop shop was in shambles and had to be completely revised to properly serve the public. The first order of business was to begin to clean up the city. On March 10, 2020, Mayor Jerome Prince founded the Gary Bond Bank for the city to increase leverage over its finances and develop a new financial tool to benefit other government units and nonprofits in Gary. The Gary Bond Bank closed its first deal on November 10, 2020 with a $16.5 million refunding for Thea Bowman Leadership Academy, saving the school over $1 million in debt and creating new income streams for the Gary Bond Bank and City of Gary Economic Development Commission. On March 5, 2020, Mayor Jerome Prince issued Executive Order No. 1, raising the city's goals for contracting with minority, women, veteran, and Gary-owned businesses. Mayor Prince solicited commitments from Hard Rock Casino, the Northwest Indiana Building Trades Council, the Construction Advancement Foundation of Northwest Indiana, and the Indiana Plan for hiring of Gary residents and contracting of Gary businesses on casino development. From his first day in office, Mayor Jerome Prince has pursued his vision of a brand new state-of-the-art high school for Gary. He identified city-owned property adjacent to Indiana University Northwest and set it aside for a Tier 1 academically high-performing secondary school. The Prince administration is committed to bringing this school to reality 
in partnership with Purdue University West Lafayette and Indiana University Northwest for opening in the fall of 2022. Mayor Jerome Prince immediately set out to improve relations between the city and the federal, state, and county governments. Gary had fallen victim in past administrations to the takeover of key municipalities by both federal and state authorities. Gary Housing Authority was in federal receivership by the United States Department of Housing and Urban Development. The Indiana Distress Unit Appeals Board has control of the Gary Community School Corporation, and the Gary Sanitary District still operated under special administration on January 1, 2020. Mayor Prince actively engaged federal authorities and began negotiating the return of the Gary Housing Authority to local control. He negotiated the demolition of abandoned schools with the state of Indiana, and the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and the U.S. Department of Justice decided for the first time in decades that the Gary Sanitary District no longer needed special administration with Mayor Prince at the helm. Mayor Prince and Commissioner Kyle Allen partnered for demolition in Gary, paid for by Lake County. One of the largest areas that Mayor Prince is concentrating on is economic development. His robust economic development plan calls for seven key strategic areas of focus. The Magnificent Seven, beginning with increasing the current population of 77,000 people. 4,000 dwelling units of market rate housing is planned across the city, beginning in the highly sought after Miller Beach neighborhood, which is home to the Indiana Dunes National Park, Marquette Park, and miles of sugar sand beaches. Dwelling units will also be positioned in the central city in the first eight blocks of Broadway, in which will include a new Save More grocery store building. The second and third platforms for economic development are retail and commercial development in the transit-oriented development Double Tracks area. This development will also focus around Indiana University Northwest, hoping to attract retailers like Starbucks and Chipotle in mixed-use developments. Light industrial and industrial primarily focused on the high demand for distribution centers based on the changing retail landscape. The final area is the airport and development around and related to its robust growth. Now is the time for you to make important decisions. Are you going to spend your days talking about Gary and pointing fingers at everyone else for our city's challenges? Or are you going to help us reimagine Gary and take a look deep inside yourselves and determine your own why for making Gary a better place? Then, after you assess what you can do, are you going to take the next step and decide how you will make a difference? I know that the buck always stops at the mayor's office and I accepted that responsibility when I took the oath of office on January 1. As a lifelong resident of Gary who's proud of his hometown and as a person who's dedicated his entire life to public service as well as being the mayor of this amazing city, I choose to serve. I choose to reimagine Gary and I choose to look forward to you joining me and my team as we continue to make this a better place to live. God bless you all, God bless the city, and God bless our country. Thank you.